This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi. Today I'm presenting this elderly lady with the Mogagnian cataract and she has lens induced glaucoma. She has been symptomatic with severe pain and redness for the last 10 days. After a couple of days of medications to reduce the intraocular pressure and inflammation, the patient is scheduled for surgery. The predominant concern and challenge in this case is to salvage the capsular bag and implant a post-chamber lens. The patient has a pre-existing agenzural astigmatism of one diopter. So I planned a temporal incision to counter this. I always begin by making a small posterior groove for gripping the globe while I'm doing my tunneling. This is the way I fix my globe. A 6 mm long partial thickness groove is created using a 15 number blade. A crescent blade is used to create the scleral tunnel. I begin in the center, go into the cornea for about 1.5 mm and then the tunneling is extended laterally to the left. And please note that the blade will be slightly tilted to compensate for the change in the curvature of the globe as I tunnel in the lateral aspect of the incisions. The scleral tunnel is extended on the other side as well. I'm creating two side ports. The capsule is stained and the OVD is introduced. A 2.8 mm bevel up sharp keratome is used to enter and then the inner lip is enlarged and please note that the cutting is done only as I enter not while coming out. The cutting is done only when going in. as the extension is being done please also note that the cutting edge is tilted up this ensures that the inner lip always runs parallel to the limbus a lot of attention needs to be given to the way we construct the scleral corneal tunnels and the sad part is the internal incision is always ignored we need to have this biconcave pattern of both the external and the internal incisions with respect to the limbus which ensures greater stability of the wound which results in long term refractive stability moving on time to perform the most difficult step in this case the rexus the anterior capsule will be very fragile and we have got specks of calcification and of course uh, we also have weak zonules in this case as soon as it is punctured the fluid cortex escapes out Gentle irrigation in the bag with BSS ensures that the fluid cortex is irrigated out to improve visualization. OVD is again injected and the rexus is continued. The cortex comes out again forcing me to stop and then re-inject OVD. This part of the capsule is tricky. The capsular tear is becoming eccentric. and large i might just extend out so i just stop there change the direction and complete the rexus from the other end the capsular edge is being trimmed now just to make the opening a little symmetric as i'm manipulating the nucleus out with my two sinski hooks it seems to be slipping out and the cortex coming out is worsening the visualization i go back with the viscoelastic and by injecting it under the nucleus i can levitate it up and above it can then be wheeled out into the anterior chamber although it can be expressed out in a single piece with a slightly larger incision However in this case I'm going to use the snare to bisect the nucleus. The nucleus is suspended in a cohesive OVD. The snare is slanted as it is introduced into the anterior chamber and then the loop is flipped to engage the nucleus. And then once ensuring that it is at the center of the nucleus the strings are pulled to bisect the nucleus and incidentally One of the hemi nucleus has just expressed itself out. 
viscoelastic is reintroduced into the eye to ensure that the remaining heavy nucleus is centered. It is then held between the two prongs of a McPherson forceps and then pulled out of the eye. I am using gentle irrigation to flush out any remaining fluid cortex. I am using the Y hook to retract the iris to see whether I can see the edge of the anterocapsule margin in this quadrant. It's not very clear though. The bag is adequately inflated with OVD to ensure that the trauma to the capsule zonular apparatus is minimized as the lens is being implanted and then dialed into place. Uh, mind you, this is a PMML lens which has a 6mm optic and the 12.5mm overall diameter. The lens is negotiated into the bag. Time to remove the OVD. Now, as it is being done, I see the lens is being decentered slightly. I use diluted transponacity to check for any a prolapse of vitreous. Uh, thankfully, there is none. With the irrigation handpiece in my left hand, Sinsky hook is used to dial the lens one more time. And now it seems to have centered well. These striations on the posterior capsule, which are perpendicular to the axis of the haptics, uh, well, there are too many of them. Probably they are indicating a very weak and a flaccid bag. Triamsone acetate is injected one more time to confirm the absence of prolapse vitreous. Sideport hydration is done. And I always ensure that the scleral incision is perfectly covered by the conjunctiva. I am using an 8 vicryl to do so. The first bite comes under the conjunctiva. So this ensures that the knot gets buried inside. The throws would be 3, 1, 1 before the final knot is put. On the first day, the eye was quite fiery. It was, there was a lot of inflammation and corneal edema. It gradually subsided in the coming days and by the 10th day, the recovery was excellent with uncorrected visual acuity of 6-9 with very little astigmatism and the patient happiness was quite gratifying. So to summarize, temporal incision in SIC is extremely useful in controlling the low to moderate degrees of pre-existing against the rural astigmatism. This case uh, deserved extreme gentleness during handling of the capsule bag as the entire capsule zonular apparatus was very weak and salvaging it was an, a challenge. Now, if I had to be very critical on myself, then uh, probably if I get a second chance, I would have spent an extra couple of minutes to irrigate out all the uh, liquid cortex in one go. This would have given me better visualization, which would probably have given me better control over the rexus. And if I had a well-centered rexus of appropriate size, I would have put in a CTR, which I could not in this case because of the eccentric and very large anterocapsular opening. So that's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.